Hi, Terry here. I'm going to talk a little bit more today about financial planning. Um, next week's assignment, you're actually going to have to turn in an Excel spreadsheet with your financial plans, charts, and whatever. So I want to go over it a little bit. Um, I've only got questions from a few people. Uh, remember, despite the fact this is an online class, you can ask questions. You can send by email. Uh, you can call me during my office hours, but by far email is the easiest way to get things going, and then we can schedule something. Um, so, uh, and, and I know the teams were, some of the teams have been working on it, but uh, I wanted to get a little more detail. I've actually updated the, the, the Google Docs that I put up there. Uh, so first, if you're going to get this, uh, there's a link inside the Canvas, uh, it's actually from like two weeks ago now, but you can still go in. So when I updated this, you'll see all the new updates. If I go into file, you can say make a copy. You can't edit this version because I don't want everyone breaking it for everyone else, but you can go ahead and make your own copy and then you can move forward with that. If you made a copy of the old one, well, sorry, I've made some changes. So I'm going to start with just going over a few things. So, um, and I've uh, explained the sort of changes I made. I made a few changes by adding some more people. Um, I added a line to compute the number of salespeople. You'll see why I did that in, uh, when I get to the next page. Um, and also, I extended this out to have a second year's worth of stuff um, because your assignment is going to be to have two years' worth of projections. It's hard to, to make a business profitable within one year, so I'm going to give you two years in terms of where it goes. You still want to be profitable, but at least you go farther out in terms of where the projections are. Um, the numbers I have here for salaries, when people get hired... All of that is stuff I would expect would be different for your companies. So you should go ahead and do that. Over here at the end, we have uh, basically quarterly breakdowns and yearly breakdowns, and those get used in various places. Uh, the next group of things have things like offices and rent. You don't have to have rent. If you're working out of your basement, that's fine. I just put it in there. You can always just go in and say rent is zero. Um, long term, it's hard to run a company with lots of employees with zero, but if you don't have many employees, you can make that number whatever you want. Um, and then you'll probably have some other expenses. This is actually one of the places where you might have some other things to add, depending on what it is you're trying to do. Um, if you're an app company and you're trying to run stuff, then you probably have the other side where you might not have offices, but you have uh, AWS computer costs and things. Again, these are numbers that, I, that I've gotten from various things. You, they may or may not make sense for where you're going to go. Um, and then marketing. Uh, you have to, as I mentioned last week, you guys have to come up with a marketing plan, right? So hopefully you talked about that, that in this week's video. But having uh, marketing is a critical element of any business. In fact, you'll see how I've made some of the, the, these things depend on it. The bottom part of this is looking at some questions in terms of how long can the company run, uh, given, in, in this case, I've just made, assumed, uh, an initial capital investment of $200,000, uh, and I've listed sweat equity. Again, this is important. Even if you say you're not going to take a salary, you still put the salary up here, and then you can then take, so in fact, if I open up the formula for sweat equity, you'll see the formula for sweat equity is the sum of AH through A8. And that is AH through A8. Uh, that's the, the sum of these three items. That is, it's the salary for the present engineering marketing sales. So if you think of three of your team members moving forward, that first year salary is your sweat equity. If you want to say you're going to take no salary for the first two years, you can put that in. Um, but in this example, this means that the sweat equity that you put in is about the same as the capital or cash you're looking for from an investor, uh, and that, in this example, makes things work out. That's why you put the sweat equity in, because you want to be able, if you're ever asking anybody for an investment, to say, well, here's how much we're investing. We're not getting paid. That's our investment. You're giving me cash. That's your investment. And so we're, we're sort of nearly uh, split on where that's going to go. And then... This spreadsheet has examples for both services, product sales, um, and in fact, and then one where I have product sales and e-commerce combined, um, which is, uh, I guess is this, this, this one's wrong. Um, it's just, this is just product sales and this is product sales plus whatever, um, e-commerce. I, I put both examples in because some of your companies are looking at more apps and e-commerce oriented. Some of them are product sales. So I'm going to quickly go through those. So for your assignment for this week, what you're going to be turning in is a spreadsheet. And I'm asking you to jump to what is it I'm expecting you're going to turn in. There are two parts. I'm expecting you're going to turn in uh, a chart. So actually, let's go to the chart first. I'm expecting a chart that, that's something like this, where you're going to show me your net income for your company, including generated made expenses. That is net income with everything. Uh, total net income that's cumulative. And then total revenues, right? I want to see your total revenues, right? So in this plot, right, if I just look at revenues after two years for whatever this model is, the revenues are you know, 
cumulative revenues are you've accumulated 1.2 million. Your uh, net income cumulative is now positive, like $600,000 or whatever that number is, and I'll come back to that in a second. Right. So these are important because this is sort of showing the the revenue um, is showing cumulative revenue. So you you know that's always a positive number. But the net income with GNA means after you've expected expenses. This point right over here, when the cumulative net income crosses back from being negative to zero, that's your break-even point. You're now breaking even, okay? It's actually not counting all your investments, so there's a second way we can define break-even where you start recovering your investment. Um, so I'm going to have a plot with these uh, three items on it uh, that I'm going to expect you to do. Uh, you can also have other items on the plot, but these three will be required. Uh, monthly revenue would be okay, but one of the problems is if I start showing things like cumulatives, then the, the monthlies are such a small number, it's hard to see. So that's why you might want a separate plot, and I'll show that in, in the other cases. The second thing I'm going to be asking you to do a little bit, which was talked about, uh, that Dr. Stewart talked about in his video last week, is this idea of computing a return on investment. Um, and so return on investment at the end of two years is I take my cumulative uh, profits with GNA, so subtracting all the expenses, and then I take, in this case, uh, I'm assuming, let's say I ask for, like you see in Shark Tank, people give you, I'm looking for this much money for this much of my company. So if I ask for two, $200,000 uh, for 40% of my company, then at the end of two years, if if there's this cumulative profit of 566000 then... They, if they own 40% of the company, their share of that is a cumulative profit times 0.4, which is their percent. And then to get a return on investment, we divide that by 200,000 and then we subtract one to make it a percent. So their return on investment is 13%. That's actually not very high, um, but it's better. And this is one of the reasons you do this in a spreadsheet is you can start thinking about how, what's my model? What, what conversion rate do I have for clicks? Okay, well, here I said 10%. Um, and if I go back over, and I'm going to see if I can make this so you can sort of see both, right? So now that 10%, if I make this 15%, say, what if I could get 15% of everybody who clicks to buy my product? Well, then my profits go up substantially. You'll notice we're now at $1.4 million cumulative profits uh, at the end of two years. It's not including taxes and everything, but still a pretty good number, right? So a small change here, even 11%, right? Is the return on investment becomes 40 and the cumulative, right? Part of the reason you do this spreadsheet is so you can sort of analyze these numbers, but it also is something where you can get a feel for how sensitive they are. So if we go back to 10%, um, and to be honest, 10% uh, conversion of clicks is actually a really great number. In lots of places, the number is more like 3%. And if I went to 3%, you'll notice that at the end of two years, my cumulative profit is minus 43,000. That is, I still lost money, right? So this can be important when you're doing a real business. You come up with some models, and the value of the model is not just to get an investor, even if I assume there's no investment. I want to know what do I have to do to become profitable. So then I could be watching my conversion rate. And if in the first month I'm getting 6%, right, at 6% my company becomes profitable, but at 3% it doesn't. Well, if I'm only getting 3%, then I know i got to work on this. If I'm getting 7%, things are okay, and I can focus on other problems. So that can be very uh, different. The other question is, What's your average revenue per client per month? So here I filled in $90. I'm going to go back to 10% here. Um, I filled in $90, right? So if you're an app business, that is a ridiculous amount of money per client per month. Um, so if I'm, if I'm an app looking at, you know, at, at uh, advertising revenue, uh, revenue per client per month might be 0.5. That's half a dollar, okay? And then obviously I've lost a lot of money. Um, so... But that might be because it also depends on how many people are trying my product. So here I have new trials uh, is 150. Well, if my app is only getting 150 people and I'm making 50 cents per app, yeah, that's not going to work. Um, to get more people, I'd have to go back over to my cost spreadsheet and look at what I did for marketing. So this assumed that my click uh, growth was, I started at 1,500. Um, so maybe I need to uh, increase how fast my clicks are growing and maybe put in more money uh, for clicks, because if I increase my, uh, sorry, no, I don't want to increase my cost per click, I want to increase um, how many clicks I'm getting, which, oh, I guess here I just start with a number. So let's say I start with 5,000 clicks per month. Um, I'm spending more, a lot more on advertising, and then I could go back and say, oh, look, 
Well, I'm still losing money. In fact, in this case, I lost more money because of those changes. So maybe those changes aren't good. I'm not telling you how to build your model. I'm just sort of showing you the kinds of things you do with your model. Um, I expect your model to help you make decisions about your business. That's what the whole point of this is. Um, so don't work hard to make the numbers so that it looks profitable. Work hard to make the numbers the most realistic expectation you can get and then look at them and then we can discuss, right? Maybe there's some changes you can make to your business. Um, for the product sales version here, I put a couple of products, how much it costs to produce them, what's their margin. You don't have to have this many products. You don't have to have whatever. Make up the best estimate you can for both what you think you can sell it for and what it's going to cost to, to produce. Um, and then that gets computed into our uh, revenue per sale and cost to produce products. Okay. And then here we have a couple of lines that are really about how do selling physical products work. So there's really two models you can use or some combination of them. So I could actually be looking at how many sales per month having a salesperson. So if I have somebody call on a business, um, like if I'm selling to schools, then I have to have somebody calling schools and I have to figure out what that's going to look like. So in this case, um, a, a more realistic way of building up these models is to say, okay, how many calls per day can a salesperson make? Of those calls, how many turn into a sales? Uh, and then this is just a number you can look at to get a feeling for how many minutes per call. So when they call, say, the school to try and sell them our gloves, how long do they get to talk? Uh, and you know, this is assuming. So I can change these numbers. So if I change this to 20%, right, all, oops, because that's not a number, um, 0.2, right? All my other numbers change. So this is a, something you can sort of figure out. Again, your numbers don't right now don't have to be perfect, but they have to be things that you can look at as being reasonable. So if I try to say, oh, look, I'm going to have 200 calls per day, um, that means the salesperson has 1.8 minutes per call. That's not very realistic. So you got to think about how you turn these things into, into reasonable numbers. And then that works through down into these formulas. Again, all the formulas are there so you can explore them. You can make some changes. You don't have to use these formulas. I'm just trying to give you some ideas. Um, so the other way you can sell stuff, uh, and, so, and if you don't have salesperson in your model, you can make that number zero, right? And obviously then, oops, didn't, didn't like zero. Um, so make zero results in sales, and then you'll get just sales per click. Uh, or if I make sales per, per thousand clicks, I can say zero, and I can make that number go away. So you can play with either number. So if a thousand people click on it, how many of them buy my product? This means that 10%. 100 out of 1,000 people who click on the ad will buy my product. And then that gets factored into these numbers. You can explore the spreadsheets. You don't have to go into great detail. But I want you to think about these design numbers very carefully. Um, these then go into things that look at what is my sales growth month over month. Um, and, and there's some months where there's a bigger bump. So I'm not quite sure. I'll have to look at that one. Um, and then that gets turned into revenue because it goes back and takes the average revenue per sale times the number of sales, and that gets worked in to produce this number. Um, it includes shipping costs and transaction fees. All that comes you gives you your net income uh, after without the general administrative, that is the sales and management. Um, and then this gets converted into income with GNA, um, which is a formula that's using stuff from the cost worksheet, which is where all the salaries and stuff were. Um, and then total relative cumulative and cumulative with GNA, right? And you'll sort of see it's important when you look at these, the number here, the negative numbers before the dollar sign. So you have to look to make sure you, you see those. Um, and then below this, I have some uh, in the product sales, right? I actually have two, one which is revenue and cumulative sales where you don't look at GNA. And I put this one here just to make sure you can sort of see this is why it's problematic. If you look at this, the company looks profitable um, through this entire time period. But with these current parameters, if I look at the business net cumulative with GNA, at the end of two years, it's still slightly negative. It never really made up all of the, the money that's gone out. So that's why it's important to look at those things. Uh, your not taking salary is your investment in the company. So it's okay if at the end of two years it's a little bit negative. You have the equity value of the company because this is actually assuming people are being paid. It's not including the offset from the investments. Um, so hopefully that gives you a little bit more details. If you're working your spreadsheet and you have questions, shoot me an email, see if I can help you work through what it is. Uh, but your, final, your assignment for this next, next week will be to turn in an Excel, Excel spreadsheet. It can be based on this, but I want you to update it to make numbers. Now, the one thing that's not in this version, as you update it, I want you to put some notes in, which you can just fill in on the side. So, oops. Um, 
if you go, you know, and you want to change your costs, make some comments about these. So I can insert uh, a comment, right, and put why this salary, right? Um, and since you're turning in an, an actual Excel spreadsheet, right, there's a little notch on there, right? I'll be able to see those kinds of comments. Um, it's you don't have to work in, in Google Docs. You can do it, all this entirely in actual Excel and get something similar, and it'll be uh, convertible back and forth. So, uh, any questions? Shoot me an email.